Hello everyone, welcome to another video. It's Francesco here. So what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at Todoist. We're gonna be taking some questions that you guys have submitted. I wanna get them answered today, so let's get stuck in. The first question comes from John Doe. He commented on YouTube with a question here. I'd like to make a filter that showcases tasks which have a at morning, at afternoon, and at evening label. This is so that I can view my today's morning, afternoon, evening, and tasks more easily. I successfully made it, however, there's a problem. It shows three areas, today, 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 not at morning, at afternoon, at evening. Is there a way that I can straighten this out? Now, John, I think the best way to do this is actually having three separate filters. So I'll show you how to do this now. So when you're on there, create three filters that are really simple. Call them morning, afternoon, and evening. Click onto them and have them there so that it's really easy. This way you can have a clean filter for each of the morning, afternoon, evening areas, and you can recolor it each time, which makes it even more exciting. Let me know whether that solves the fix for you. I know that a lot of people want to set up this morning, evening thing chronologically, and that filter system is a good way of doing that. So the second question comes from Zent Right on Reddit. Now she or he says, thanks for doing this. I've been struggling with my several things with my GTD setup and I'm beginning to think GTD may not be for me. What advice do you have for creating a task management system with Todoist that works for you? Now, I personally read GTD when I was quite, yeah, when I was about 15 or 16. I really enjoyed the book. It has some amazing premises. The way that I use GTD in my system is I use the inbox. I use some of the project folders that they recommend. And I use the general mentality, you know, for example, when you get something and it takes less than two minutes, do it now or defer for later, etc. All of those sort of little, like tidbits. But what I recommend is if you have used to do um, GTD for a while, uh, and you've been struggling with it, I wouldn't be too keen on like keeping the same structure with it. Like don't, you don't have to stick to GTD, you can adapt to it. And that's what I've done with my system. So I'm gonna include my Todoist setup in the description because I think it will help. I'm also gonna include a video by Carl Pullian who's gonna explain the GTD setup. It's a great video, I really enjoy watching it. It, it, it explains it really, really well. But what I recommend doing is actually creating a unique setup, something that blends your own task management system, your own, your own thought process into Todoist, uh, but embedding some of the GTD elements. Uh, that's what I started doing with the emoji setup and also the minimalist setup of only those four uh, boxes. And it really helped. It really did help me create a more defined thing based on my routine, based on my personality. So, also, I recommend actually just getting a notebook across one week, one full week, and actually just noting down some things you notice about your routine. Maybe in the mornings, um, you don't like to have too many tasks to come to straight away. Like you don't like to seeing loads of tasks. Or for example, uh, you don't like all P1s there. They might scare you. Or you like to empty your inbox at the end of the day. Find all of these little systems that you have, bung them into a like long list of things that you like to fix, and then go and fix them inside of your task management system. I'll include all the links in the description. So the third question comes from Reza. It's from Disposable. Disposable. Oh, Disposable. Um, what's with the using indents as a means of implementing subtasks or subprojects instead of parent relationship? It may. It makes the UI unintuitive and severely complicates the AIM API. Are there any plans to change this? So I don't know whether Todoist actually have any plans to change the API based on this. I can understand why it makes the API tough because uh, another service I want to integrate with Todoist and then having to deal with like this like deep subtask thing going on, that just makes it hard and it would be tough for a uh, service to connect with it well. Um, Personally, I like the indent in the subtask subprojects. I like that. Um, I get what you mean about the parent-child relationship. That would make it easier in terms of visuals. What I recommend doing, uh, Disposable, is checking out a section header. So what you can do is add a colon to the end of your uh, message, and you can create a header inside a project. This way, you can almost have headers 
almost like a parent-child relationship there. And that's a good way in terms of when you want to create projects. It's a smart and smooth way um, when you're looking at it as well, so it doesn't look too distracting. Plus, when you tick that certain thing off, um, you can't tick it off because it removes the actual tick box. So give that one a try and let me know what your thoughts are. Another question from Reddit comes from F Wade, and they say, what's the future of smart schedule feature? Has its acceptance improved? And where are the pos positive in-depth reviews by users? So the, I don't know what the future of the smart schedule feature, I think it's gonna continue to evolve. It's an AI based feature, so it's always learning about you over time, which is great. And what I think is gonna happen with it is it's gonna get a bit deeper with some of the projects that you're working on. So not just the um, like tasks and the acknowledgements, but the projects, like what time do you cert do certain projects? Um, and it's gonna be more adapted to that situation. I think it probably needs a bit more input, like for example, uh, do you not like working on weekends or do you, like what type of job are you in? which might help it to learn faster and be a bit more creative. Um, but I think they're gonna be improving it. They've always said they're improving it. And in terms of a positive in-depth review by users, Carl actually did a feature on this. His is gonna be in the description. Mine is gonna be in the description too. I went over this feature. I think it's great. I use it slightly. I use it more at the weekends to like plan out the next week. But apart from that, I think it's gonna be steadily growing over time. Okay, so this question comes from Oscar on Twitter. And he asks, how do you do your week review? This is something that I've progressed over time. I never really had a week review uh, on Todoist before maybe, Jan mm, no, it was mid last year that I started it really on Todoist. Because what I noticed was, as you go about your day, you find pieces or things that you will put towards your career, whether it's other people you, like for example, for me, other people I wanna collab with on YouTube or like career opportunities or, um, anything really, things that you need to review, like uh, what I'm gonna get my dad for birthday next week, for example. Anything that you're gonna be picking up across your week, things that you'll not necessarily read, but things that are progressive that to the next week. Um, dump, this is how I do it. So I dump them all in that review box. What I do is on the Friday and Saturday, I have that week review and I actually go into detail. I sit there and I go through all those tasks, clear that, and then obviously keep it going for the next week. Now I've done a full video on how I currently do my week review. I'll include that in the description. What I recommend for you, Oscar, is just to try doing it for a couple of weeks. Start doing that, clearing at the end of the week and keeping this constant refresh. I recommend it, I feel really a lot lighter because a lot of the time we get carried away with, uh, like for example, during the week, I will find something that I like reading or find something that I like that is progressive towards my work and I get carried away maybe looking at it now when I actually should. I know what my plan is for the week. I know what tasks I need to do. Maybe I shouldn't distract myself now. Maybe I should add it to the week review and then come back to it for the next week. It's really handy once I started doing that. Okay, so Twitter user again, Pom Ponos. So this one is why I cannot attach photos or emails to the task in Todoist uh, on iOS. When do you plan to launch a time tracking? Okay, so um, I think that attaching the photos or emails to a task in iOS. Um, photos, you can do that uh, already. Um, if you can't, that must be a bug. Emails, they're probably gonna be working on this integration a bit deeper. That's something stuck with the API at the moment. Um, but when it comes to using a time tracker natively, Todoist probably are gonna be working on this. Asana have been progressing with this a lot. I know Asana have got great tools like EverHour that allow you to do this. To do this, they actually have a couple of integrations that allow them to do that. Toggle is one of them. It's a great one. It works really well. Um, there's a couple of other ones like Pomodoro timers, and, and I'm going to include all of them in the description as links, so you'll be able to get to them. But what I really find handy is the to do this integration center where you can go and always find to do this integrations that might help you in your daily routine. Okay, so a bite of Apple uh, said on Twitter, are you excited for the Google Calendar integration? Now, this is something I saw on the uh, on the CEO Amir's account, and I really liked the idea of this two-way native integration with Todoist and Google Calendar. I think that's gonna be so cool. Um, I, think it's, I think it's something that's been due for a while. Uh, for me, I don't tend to use that that much, but I think it might be handy 
if it had like a, like for example, the one thing I get annoyed at with calendars and task managers is you, it integrates all of the tasks you have into your calendar straight away. And that's like sometimes a burden. But with what I'm doing with my subtasks, I might actually be considering this a lot more just based on what I'm actually spending my time off against my calendar. Am I excited for it? Yes, I am. I always look forward to seeing what they can do with this sort of stuff. But two-way native integration looks great. One other question was, how do you get emojis into your to-do list? Now, this is something that I get this a lot. I actually made a video on this one, but it doesn't explain it incredibly well. So the one way you can do it is you can either do it for Todoist Web. When you're on Todoist Web, all you have to do is install it an emoji downloader, which you can attach to your Chrome, or just go to Emojipedia, um, copy and paste that emoji, and then when you're inside the project title, just add it before or after or wherever you like um, inside of there, and it will do it quite easily. Now, I like the way that this looks and the way that it's set up. You can also do it on mobile if you're totally mobile. All you have to do is paste the emoji into the project uh, box and it's a go-go. You can start using that emoji as a way, as like an almost an icon for your project. It's something that I really like and something that I think to do is probably will be looking at adding in the next few months. So I got one other comment asking, how do I use the routines project? So I have a project folder in Do called routines. Now what I do at the moment is I only stick recurring tasks in there. Recurring tasks, things like uh, meditation, um, clearing inbox, Evernote inbox, um, and week review and planning next week's uh, uh, calendar items. And that's all I have in there at the moment. Uh, it's something that I think I just keep, like keep those recurring tasks in there for some reason, because I'm using all of those project folders as project management in some ways. So that's a great way for me to do, you know, like, keep coordinated on all the recurring tasks I have. To create a recurring task, all you have to do is press every day at dot 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 or every two weeks, whatever situation you have, but it's a great way to create routines for sure. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this to do as Q&A. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it on Twitter, and let me know whether this is something that you want on a more regular basis. I get a lot of to-do's comments anyway, and people emailing me. So let me know in the description, uh, let me know in the comments whether you want this one or on Twitter, whether you want a Q&A too, because I'll happily do that uh, with you guys very soon. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Anyway guys, make sure you have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.